good idea to check the tread while you get the tire off. Look for nails and things of that nature. And then while you get it off again, always check the brake pads. I don't think you can see in there, but this pad has plenty of life on it. So I'm going to say the pads don't need to be replaced, at least on this wheel. When you find your bleeder valve, this particular case, it's right here with the rubber cap on it. And that's the bleeder valve. So I'm going to crack that loose and then finger tighten it and set up my bleeder on there. Okay, this particular one's 10 millimeter. You have to be careful. It's 10 millimeter and 3 eighths are very, very close. And if it's a 3 eighths, the 10 could strip that. Let's see, here's my 3 eighths. I cannot make that fit on there. So this is a 10. Because these are probably over tightened, I'm just going to loosen it first. And that way, you see now it turns. So I'm just going to tighten that up. And I'm going to get the bleeder on there and we'll bleed this one. Okay, so I'm going to wipe that down. And then just attach my bleeder hose right over that. Slide that down and give it a little extra oomph on there. You notice know, so I'm trying to route this hose so that it goes up before it goes into the bottle. You notice I've got it probably overfilled right now. You can start with less fluid in there. Uh, this is not my first I'm doing this, so that's why I've got extra fluid in there. But when I crack this open and start pumping the brakes, you'll see the fluid will run out, air bubbles may come out, air bubbles will get stuck at the top, the fluid will go back in, and uh, the main thing is don't let the master cylinder get too low, so we're going to fill that up first, and we're going to check it frequently. Okay, we're at the master cylinder, you see it's, the fluid level is below the max, that tells me that we probably have a worn out brake pad somewhere, which is why when I'm doing this I'm going to check all the pads thoroughly. Uh, for some reason Honda doesn't want you to be able to fill this up without a funnel. So I've gotten a funnel and make sure it's very clean. You don't want to contaminate your brake fluid with anything else that you've run through the funnel. But I'm going to overflow the master cylinder to start with. So we're going to check it frequently during this process so we don't let that run down. And you also want to make sure that you don't let any brake fluid drip on anything because it can remove paint, cause other issues. And I'm going to cap this off because it does grab moisture from the air and being in Texas, it's humid. Okay, here's the master cylinder in the Chevy. This is a 2004 Avalanche. I suspect that most of your Chevy GMC truck products are going to have a very similar, if not the exact same, master cylinder. Here's the master cylinder in the Ford Crown Victoria. Again, this one is much easier to access than the Honda. The process is exactly the same as was shown on the Honda. Keep the master cylinder full while you're bleeding the brakes, flushing the fluid through, starting the passenger rear, remove the tire, clean off the bleeder valve, open the bleeder valve, put your bleeder on there, pump the brakes as many times as you need to to 
bleed it, keep filling the master cylinder. I check it at least every five to ten pumps of the brake pedal, so you absolutely do not want to let it run dry. The further along you get in the process, the less pumps of the brake pedal you'll have to do. Obviously the, the farthest one from the master cylinder has got the longest brake line, so that one's going to take the most pumps. By the time you get to the driver's front, very few pumps and it'll flush all the fluid through. Okay, we are at the farthest wheel from the master cylinder, which is the passenger side rear. If you ask 100 people, you probably get at least two or three different opinions on which wheel to start at. This is how I've always done it. And it works for me, so I'm going to stick to it. So I've loosened that up. You see the fluid's already starting to come out. I'm going to pump the brake pedal and we'll watch the fluid will go from that dark color to a lighter color as the new fluid runs through the system. And periodically I'll be checking the master cylinder and refilling. See the air bubbles coming in. This could be being sucked in around the bleeder valve and not actually coming out of the system. I'm going to pump it a couple more times just to make sure. I'm not seeing any more. So go ahead and tighten this back. cap back on and this wheel is done that's a shot of the brake pads there showing that we have plenty of life on this set my guess is if we have an issue it's on the driver side rear that seems to be the one that doesn't cooperate no matter what I do and we're heading there next so we'll see all right, since my footage didn't come out before, this is the Crown Vic bleeder valve. Remove the rubber cap. There's the bleeder valve. Right there. I've already bled these brakes and flushed the fluid, but I said the footage didn't come out, so I wanted to show you where it was. Alright, this is the Chevy. It's right there it actually has a cap with a little tab on it. I'm just going to finger tighten these now. When we let the vehicle down, we will torque these to the proper spec. Alright, so they're finger tight. With the torque wrench. Over the vehicle. And we'll torque these to specs. You check your owner's manual or the internet, see what the Torque setting is for your vehicle. I always want to go in a crisscross pattern so you don't warp the rotors.
see the wear indicators there. So, I don't know. I really expected this one to be worn down, so we'll see if any of the others are worn down. Just like on the other side, get your bleeder valve here. Clean it off, open it up, pump the brake, and get the fluid out. Getting a lot of air bubbles. I'm gonna tighten that up, make sure it's not sucking the air in from around the bleeder valve. Although we've had enough brake issues, it's very possible that there's just that much air in the lines. That's how you do the wheel properly. Bleeder valve is right there. That's the Chevy front. You can actually reach this one a lot easier without moving the wheel. However, you can film it very well when the wheel's on. So, took the wheel off so that y'all could see.
I'm going to top that off and get back to the max line. footage here. This is a grease fitting that looks like it needs some grease. So just connect your pump there and fill it with grease. You can see I'm just squeezing it slowly. that grease fitting. Starting to feel like it's filling up. There's another one up top here. This vehicle's 13 years old, and I know it's never been filled. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on both sides while I've got the wheels off and I'm doing the brakes. Because this is adding less than five minutes to the job. Make sure you get the fitting real clean before you start adding the grease. Like I said, just take your time, fill it slowly so that you don't pop the grease seal or placing a lot more than just the grease inside. <laughs> 